It's to do with knowing and being known. I remember how it first seemed odd that in biblical Greek, knowing was used for making love. Who's it knew so and so? A carnal knowledge. So love is trust each other with knowledge of each other. You know, not of the flesh, but through the flesh. Knowledge of self, uh, the real him, the real her, in extremis, the mask slipped from the face. <sighs> Every other version of oneself is on offer to the public. We share our vivacity, our, our grief, our sulks, anger, joy. We hand it out to anybody who happens to be standing around friends and family with a momentary sense of indecency, perhaps. <sighs> the strangers without hesitation. Our lovers share us with the passing trade. But we insist that we give ourselves to each other. <laughs> what selves? left. What else is there that we haven't dealt out like a deck of cards? <sighs> Carnal knowledge. Personal, final, uncompromised, knowing being known. I revere that. Having that is being rich. You can be generous with what's shared. She walks, she talks, she laughs. She lends a, a sympathetic ear. She kicks off her shoes and dances on the tables. She's everybody's and it don't mean a thing. Let them eat cake. <sighs> Knowledge is something else. The undealt card. And while it's held, you're free and easy and nice to know. And when it's gone, everything is pain. Every single thing. Every object that meets the eye. A pencil, a tangerine, a travel poster as if the physical world has been wired up to pass a current back to the part of your brain where imagination glows like a filament in, in a lobe. It's no bigger than a torch bulb. Pain. <sighs> 